In this video tutorial, we are going to modify a Tyson TV project that is created using the project wizard of Tyson and we are going to make some modifications and view the results in an emulator. So here we are going to introduce an iframe component and load an external website uh, inside the iframe component in a Tyson TV application. So uh, in my previous application, I have explained to you about how to create a Tyson project and run that project inside an emulator. For those of you who have missed that previous project, you can just refer the link in the description below to go through that tutorial. So let's get started. So here I have used the default uh, Tyson TV project uh, that is created, which is a basic um, uh, JavaScript project. So uh, let's go to the index.html fi uh, file, which is the uh, landing page of our application. We'll uh, look th through a detailed look with the project structure in one of our uh, videos in the future. So for the time being, so this is the landing page of our application. And uh, here I'm going to remove the unneeded code. So I'm going to delete all the um, section inside the body tag okay uh, then I'm going to enter the iframe element so iframe uh, uh, src equals so just going to this is the address of my blog for those of you who have and uh, now take a look at the blog you can find some content related to uh, Tyson TV and uh, so the legacy version of smart TV there so here I have given the source for the iframe element so this is the page that we're going to load it inside the iframe and uh, so you have a width so right now uh, I'm going to give the width and height to be 100% uh, because we do not have any other content on our page so one more important attribute that we need to take a look is the sandbox attribute so the sandbox attribute is something that imposes certain restrictions on the page that is being included inside the iframe element so the sandbox attribute uh, provides various restrictions like it prevents the loaded page being uh, loading some external scripts it prevents the pages from um, loading pop-ups, some executing some malicious scripts, etc., etc. So uh, there are various conditions that um, come under the sandbox attribute that you can specify. You can put some rules for the page that is being loaded inside the iframe component, so that the page that is being loaded inside the iframe. So this page can be anything. Either it can be a HTML file from inside your application, or it can be something. Uh, that is uh, that is an ex uh, content of an external website so it can be anything that you uh, load inside the iframe so you have to make sure that the content that is being loaded does not do anything bad with your application so you impose certain restrictions on that so sandbox attribute helps you with that so here we just need to uh, load the application uh, load the web page I mean uh, so we do not need to do any actions with it so just for demo purposes we are just loading the website so uh, for our example we are just going to uh, leave the sandbox attribute as an empty value so if you leave the sandbox attribute as empty so the following are the restrictions imposed on the website so the website cannot come with any plugins the website cannot show pop-ups by default the website cannot execute scripts by default we cannot do any kind of navigation in that website by default the website cannot do any form submission action so these are some of the basic restrictions that is applied by default in a web page that is being loaded inside an iframe component in a, a, a smart tv application so for our thing we just need to load the application we just impose the following uh, ad, uh, I mean restrictions using the sandbox attribute so uh, that's it with the iframe component iframe this we all know right uh, so uh, that's it with the iframe component so our index.html page looks fine and uh, one more thing that i have to do is we have uh, added the page that is needed to load it we have added restrictions to the page at the iframe level 
so we also need to make sure that uh, the content that is being loaded does not do anything related to index.html or uh, and also with the entire Tyson TV application so we need to impose certain restrictions and we need to make sure certain conditions are enabled for this page to be loaded smoothly so for that uh, for application wide configuration we are going to set in the config.xml file so let's open the config.xml file so this is the configuration file that our application um, the application manager which runs our application actually makes use of it so the application manager goes through the config.xml file it knows what are the capabilities our application what are the facilities that our application can do and make sure that our application stays within the limits of the spec that is provided in the config.xml so they will take a detail, detailed look at the um, uh, the application manager and the application lifecycle of a Tyson TV application in our further video tutorials for the time being so uh, just uh, we'll make sure the basic changes are uh, made so that our page loads properly okay so uh, here we have something called the privileges privileges are something that the Tyson TV or the Samsung uh, TV provides that allows the application to do some content apart from uh, showing the basic stuff say for example your application needs to access the Bluetooth device or you say your application needs to access the internet or say your application needs to access an external device so these are uh, so the both the Samsung side and from the Tyson side uh, they have provided some privileges so that you have to allow them individually to in order to for your application to make uh, the specific changes so for example in our case we need uh, cont I mean access to the internet so we are going to add an internet access policy so for that just click on the add button and from you can see the list of uh, uh, privileges that are provided by Samsung so been billing contents download etc so the thing that I'm going to use is the network public that makes us our application to make use of a public network to download some content okay so this is the thing that I'm going to use this is provided by Samsung so if you are planning to use something that is uh, specific to Tyson then you can go to the custom privileges and enter the privilege for Tyson for accessing the internet so for the Tyson the privilege will be uh, <coughs> uh, uh, so yeah so yeah so for Tyson uh, I got to do is Tyson dot log okay so this is some this is the privilege that uh, Tyson provides for accessing the internet if in case if you're planning to use the uh, Tyson privilege um, so either you can use Samsung or Tyson so uh, here we are focusing on Samsung right so I mean so I'm planning to use the Tyson privilege so either you use Tyson or the Samsung so the application you are giving privilege to the application say yeah yes this application can access the internet and your application manager that runs your application behaves accordingly okay so uh, I have given a link in the description box below that provides a list of the various privileges that are provided by uh, Tyson uh, so the privileges provided by Samsung are given below so you can see here right in this area uh, for in the Tyson cases you can refer the link in the description to uh, see what are the list of uh, the uh, the privileges that are provided by Tyson. So I have added the privilege. Then I'm going to click on the OK button. Okay, now you can see that the privilege is added here. Since so case, if you do want to add another privilege, say want to access something related to the product info, then you have to select the product info privilege. So for our uh, application, so this is enough. We just have to access the internet and now you have given permission to the application okay so you can access the application can access the internet so what all are the areas my application is allowed to access since in the internet so that is something that we set by means of a policy 
so here in the policy tab we are going to add the site that we are planning to access okay so here we have one more flag called allow subdomain that are we able to access the content that is subdomain content inside the domain that we are giving here so for the time being we are giving it to false so apart from the uh, network access permission we are also uh, able to give the url wise uh, permission for our application so that only our application can access only these url links through the privilege network privilege so by uh, giving a fine grained control to the developer that says uh, okay so uh, the developer is able to dictate what the application can do what are all the sites that the application is allowed to access so the uh, developer can kind of uh, fine tune the security limits of the application so that the application he will not do something uh, bad apart from the configuration that is provided by the developer so here we have another some more flags that says the content security policy so the navigation flag and etc we are not setting that so for the time being we are just setting the default so just able to access this so once i set uh, the thing i'm just going to uh, save the file and just run it so the running process is same right click the project run us Tyson web application so the Tyson emulator is a bit heavy it's going to take a little bit of time based on the configuration in your system so let's wait for the emulator okay uh, so after our uh, emulator gets loaded so this is our application look so uh, uh, please don't be confused about the way the, uh, the the website gets loaded so it's because of a style issue so i'm going to just uh, go to the index.html file and instead of the height being a percentage value i'm just going to set something to a uh, um, like uh, 800 pixel so I'm just going to save it and then I'm going to click the run button again so that my emulator gets reloaded okay and so yeah here you can see that uh, now the iframe gets uh, uh, the, the height that I have set now so for uh, setting the height to a percentage value then you have to make some additional style modifications so for the time being i just set to a pixel value so you can see my uh, site that uh, uh, okay so that my site is loaded inside the iframe component so that's how you make uh, changes to the application you make some change you go on the run button then the application just gets reloaded inside the emulator so uh, in this um, video i hope you got a basic idea about uh, uh, how to change contents how to load the changed contents in an emulator uh, so what basically is a config.xml file and how so uh, there are certain things like privileges we need to set into there are certain things like policies that we need to set into into the config.xml file in order to control the application behavior okay so uh, i hope you got a little bit idea on this we will move on to further the development topics in a future video tutorial so stay tuned for further updates thanks for watching bye